Well, Renee, thanks for uh, joining us here at the LSI conference. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Beautiful yeah. location. Oh my gosh, right? <laughs> <laughs> there are surfers down behind us. <laughs> there are surfers and dolphins. Oh my gosh, I didn't see the dolphins. There, yeah, there's pods of dolphins out there. Oh my goodness. If you look, you can see they're usually surfacing and going down and hanging around the surfers. I'm cool. hoping they're dolphins. <laughs> I'm telling myself they're dolphins and not sharks. That's it. That's it. Good. So what's bringing you to the conference? I want to talk about Cala, and then I want to talk about why you're here at the conference, other than it's the first one taking us all back. All back, exactly. Um, I'm here at the conference. I, I am in a, a position to do fundraising right now. Mm -hmm. um, I also really am here um, to support our industry. I mean, for me, what we do every day is impacting patients, and so we collectively need to be joining arms with the rest of the industry to support it. Yeah, and, and I love that because that has been the theme here is, you know, Everybody wants to get back to in-person, face-to-face. Yep. You know, the, the disconnected world certainly has some, some, you know, benefits to it, even though it's on the fringes, really. But I love to see the new vibe of the entrepreneurs in MedTech. I've been around it for 32 years. And it's, it's exactly what you said is, I am here to support the other people who are also in battle right now to get their devices out and get them in the hands of patients. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we're not, you know, we're a series D series, you know, company. So um, a lot of the investors here are probably not the growth investors that, that we're talking to. But I've had a wonderful series of a bunch of series A and series B companies that are using this venue to do their fundraising. And yeah. it's really nice to see them. Mm -hmm. And supporting them, you as a, you know, you're pretty busy. We were, we were talking, you're sitting on a couple boards. Yep. So Ocala, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Reflexion. Yes, and right? Neuropace. Yep. And you know, Neuropace. So, yeah, you getting down here, <laughs> you're a bit busy. I'm a bit busy. And you're up in the Bay? We are. The uh, company is headquartered just south of SFO, mm -hmm. and then I live down in Menlo Park, closer to Stanford. Okay. Yeah. So take me through the tech. What, what, what is the intention of Cala? Who's it serving? Mm -hmm. Where are you right now in regards to the prop relative to the patient? Yep. And a little bit about the tech. So uh, Cala was founded as a spin-out from Stanford Biodesign. Mm -hmm. I was at the time at J&J. And so I was part of the JJDC, which is the venture arm of J&J. &J, and I was also on the board of Neuropace at the time. And uh, Kate Rosenbluth, our founder, showed us a technology and a video of um, a wearable wrist-based solution. It didn't look like this. It was a little more crude. Mm -hmm. um, but what we were able to show is that um, during uh, stimulation, the patient's tremor was reduced. And then after the stimulation was completed, it actually stayed as a, as a reduced tremor profile. And so these patients were benefiting, not just wearing a stimulator, but also for time after uh, the session was complete. So um, seeing this idea of responsive neuromodulation, which I learned through Neuropace, mm -hmm. that they do in a cranial implanted technology, but doing it at the wrist, um, I immediately said to her, we're gonna go start a company. And uh, then have to chase after her down the hall to actually give her my business card. So that was really the foundation of it. Um, spun out of Stanford Biodesign, so J&J &J and Lux co-led the Series A. Oh, Lux did? Yeah. Okay. So they co-led it with us, um, and we went after and did a couple of really smart things. One, we opened up a Cala clinic. Mm. So we actually had the ability to bring patients in. It's an IRB approved clinic. So we've been doing human factors work and, and patient uh, work since day one. And when was that? 2015. Okay. Yep. And so uh, we went through a process. We um, uh, fi figured out with the FDA that we're a Genova 510K, mm -hmm. which actually uh, is a nice validation that we are truly a first-in-class technology. Mm -hmm. A little bit painful. Um, Genova always. Yeah, right? right? But we got through it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we had two approvals in hand, one for the stimulator and one for our dr proprietary dry electrode materials that are housed in the, in the band itself. And we said, okay, we can either launch commercially or we can go and do a chronic at-home use study. And we chose to do the latter. And in, in 2020 hindsight, right, it was a really smart move mm -hmm. because what we also were able to do is turn on the motion sensors, not just to calibrate the device as a patient interfaces with it, but also to turn on the motion sensors after a therapy session is complete. So we ended up with this almost dose by dose, incredibly rich data set. So we could measure tremor amplitude before yeah. a therapy session and then again after. On a timeline? And then compare those two mm. and show that the amplitude of benefit the patients were getting um, throughout the, the course of three months of at-home use. Mm. That created an incredible database that we today continue to mine for all of our machine learning algorithms and, and further insights into the therapy benefits for the patients. 
Um, so that was a really smart thing that we did and did that study. We learned a lot about uh, essential tremor patients. There's about 7 million ET patients in the U.S. Um, and a lot of them feel underserved because there's medications yep. which are ineffective. No, and not a high level of compliance too, nope. is there? No, because they have poor side effect profiles. And then there's surgery and there's really nothing else for them. Mm -hmm. And so we had budgeted a six month enrollment and uh, we launched the study in December of 18. And by like the first week of February, literally Christmas Eve, we started enrollment. By first week of February, we completed enrollment at 263 patients. Um, and that just speaks to, to the unmet need of the patient population. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you think of tremor. And so is, is that tremor um, a liability to my health? Is it a quality of life? How does that affect the patient? When yeah, it's, think it's a it? great it's a great question. It's not one of those conditions that you present in the emergency department, and therefore the the cost of that patient is, is very is elevated. It's really a um, it's a it's a quality of life issue in that patients have um, uh, it's a progressive disease, mm. and by the time that they've sought a prescription and for the Calatrio at least they're oftentimes seventy years old, and they've really lost a lot of functionality. They can no longer feed themselves or dress themselves, and in, in also digging into all of the sort of comorbidity data, they have a, almost a 50% greater likelihood of depression and anxiety. So there are clear mental health issues in this patient population. And so by restoring the functionality, restoring their ability to do what they care about, mm -hmm. right? Some of our patients only wear the device a couple times a week, and they do it when they have their, you know, their activity of interest, right? right? So right. they want to play piano or they yeah. want to paint. Yeah. And so we give them back that ability to do that. Yeah. What, why do you think, interesting question and interesting observations, why do you think they only wear it a couple times a week? Because well, it seems so... No, you know, non-intrusive to it, me. It is. We actually, on the flip side, so we have those those infrequent flyers, and then we would have what we call my frequent flyers. Patient straps it on in the morning, and they just keep pressing the button. So they're using it in back-to-back -back sessions. They're getting kind of all-day tremor relief. Mm -hmm. It doesn't interfere with their day. And so we have um, we have both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And and so the, the tech itself, there's mm -hmm. there's the, uh, 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 the wrist watch. Yep. Right? Does it tell time? It does. Cool. The wristwatch. Yes. And then, how do I collect the data? So the stimulate the the proprietary um, hardware, the board, mm -hmm. uh, specialized electronics are here, as are the sensors. So mm -hmm. those motion sensors that we just use off-the-shelf sensors. Proprietary electrodes are two-way electrodes. They're able to read signals from the body and then deliver the electricity as well. Wow. So uh, at the end of the day, when the patient uh, is going to sleep, they recharge their device. They place it into the charging station, which is both a recharger, and it also is how we upload the data to our cloud. We decided to do this. We wanted to make sure we were incredibly HIPAA compliant and had secure data transfers. So we today do it through the base station. In the future generations of technology, we look to be sort of real-time IoT connected. Oh, really? Yep. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So wh where do we go with this? This is clearly, you know, this is one of those technologies that touches home for anybody who has had a family member or themselves mm -hmm. yep. have, have been susceptible to this terrible disease, right? Mm -hmm. and, we, and it seems to, like, escalate pretty quickly in regards to once it appears mm -hmm. uh, that that pathway is is mental health issues, depression, mm -hmm. which I don't even think as a population we really understand yeah. how that affects health. Yeah. So this is an early stage. Is there reimbursement for this right now? We, uh, we actually w won that, that victory lap in our first year on market. So we submitted for unique coding with CMS mm. in January of 2020. And by January of 2021, we were notified we had two unique codes. So a code for the stimulator and then a code for the, the supply. The, the band has to be replaced every 90 days. Um, and so uh, our those codes went into effect on April 1st. And so we're sort of new in our reimbursement close. <laughs> <laughs> and breakthrough designation on this as well? That's on the Parkinson's label expansion. Okay. So the, the ET actually, we actually got our de novo approval in April of 2018. The FDA didn't actually set up the breakthrough uh, designation program until 2018. Mm. So it wasn't even available to us when we did our ET work. Yeah. So essential tremor is the first uh, indication. We are doing work to expand into the Parkinson's population. Um, and that is covered by breakthrough. Mm. So we're in D round. Um, is this a platform that has applications? Who are some of the existing players in that space, especially in Parkinson's? Because to your point, it's been surgery or uh, a pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. right? So, so what category would this fall in from a classic medical device? How do we get this out 
to the tens of millions of people who, who need it? Yeah, it's a great question. So we are a, uh, we are a uh, technology that requires to be under the care of a physician. So mm -hmm. we do require a prescription. Mm -hmm. And we like that. We want to have that validation from the healthcare professionals. Um, we then are seeking reimbursement on behalf of our patients. We feel that's important. We're a class two medical device. Mm -hmm. And so um, our safety profile is such that, you know, a, a number of our physicians have indicated that, you know, once we get full reimbursement, they'll write us as first line therapy. Really? Yep. And so it, it's, a, it's, you know, their lips to God's ears to make it happen, but um, it's, it's a nice testament to the safety profile of the technology. Yeah. Um, in Parkinson's, you know, we're going to start uh, a little more carefully. We're going to start with the healthcare professionals. One of the things when you look at a Parkinson's patient, within probably the first five years of diagnosis, there's kind of a, a series of um, symptoms that they suffer from. It's uh, tremor, hand tremor, both resting and action tremors. Uh, it's things like rigidity and slowness. And mm -hmm. as you know, it's a it's, um, high incidence of falls in the Parkinson's mm -hmm. population. Yeah. So um, in Parkinson's, we're starting with the tremor part of it. Um, clearly, there's more work to, for us to do. The, the fundamental science is based on um, a fancy uh, word called dysrhythmias. It's basically, I know, don't say it fast. Um, <laughs> or at all. <laughs> or at all. <laughs> but it's, it is, it's basically, there's a, a portion in your brain that either degenerates with age and time and maybe genetics, mm. um, or it's um, affected by injury. And uh, there's a whole series of sort of scientific, you know, cascade of events that happen. But at the core of it is this, is this dysrhythmia condition. Our scientists believe that there's over, I don't know, 20 different disease indications that are implicated by this dysrhythmia. So we're going to be busy at work for, you know, the next, you know, 20 years ourselves mm -hmm. getting after each of those. Many of those are actually related to Parkinson's. Um, and so we're very eager to help the movement disorder patient. Is Parkinson's one of those diseases that we can see if we're predisposed for from a genetic perspective? Um, yeah, I do believe that there is a, a biomarker for Parkinson's. There mm. isn't one yet for essential tremor. We okay. do believe ET is a familial disease, yeah. so there's got to be a genetic marker for it. Mm -hmm. um, it just has been understudied. Yeah. And so if I'm a patient, when would be my first opportunity to understand CALA and how it might be prescribed for me? What, what, what moment in time is that that the clinician, maybe in a year or two from now when they're familiar with that, when would that enter into the conversation? Typically, well, all of our clinical data supports that we work even in a mild tremor situation. So if you're an early diagnosed essential tremor patient and you're really struggling with a little bit of tremor every day, the patients should be using our device. We don't have uh, a poor side effect profile like the drugs. And clearly, it, they're a long way away from making a surgical decision. Yeah. So um, uh, on the flip side, though, we also have data that suggests that even in the most acute or more severe episodes of tremor, we work 90 plus percent of the time. Wow. So we get you at the mild level and also at the more severe levels as so, well. So what does that mean for me as the patient? So take me through that, it, it, the mild and the severe. So I'm, I, I, I'm not aware of this. I've got severe tremors. Yep. What will, no promises, what will likely or potentially be the influence of that device on me? Take me through a regular day. A regular day? Yeah. Our patients are, um, uh, Again, it, it matters what is, their, what is their most bothersome symptom. Can they not brush their teeth? We have mm. one patient who loves to use her water pick. And she says that when she uses her water pick without using her calatrio, there's water all over the bathroom, mm. right? So she just wants to get through her daily activities and be supported. Mm. So um, it really is an on-demand therapy today. We're, we're obviously looking at different modes to interface with a patient in more of a chronic dosing modality. That's longer term. We'll be getting after those dosing studies later this year and early next. Um, but right now, we're giving you that acute relief. Yeah. So the patient puts the device on. Yeah. They start it. At about minute 15, the tremor starts to um, be reduced. It continues to kind of, uh, 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 the tremor amplitude and power is reduced for the full 40 minutes of stimulation. And then the patient can either press it again and keep going, or in fact, they get about an hour of benefit after the therapy session is complete. Wow. So if you think about it, we're giving almost two hours of tremor relief. So it's a really wide open space of time for do your activities of daily living. And then, um Statistically, when can I reset that again? Or I get that two hours and then the cycle starts again if Some I Some patients it keep going. Some patients don't mind. Some patients say I feel a little bit of numbness or tingling in my yeah. fingers, yeah. so I don't like the sensation mm. of the stimulation. Typically, after about minute three or four, it kind of falls in the background and you, it, you don't um, realize it anymore. Yeah. Uh, some patients don't like it, and so they'd rather get the full hour benefit and then start a session again. Got it. There's yeah. nothing that prevents them from doing back-to-back -back sessions. Got it. 
Well, fascinating it is. It's one of those diseases that when you see somebody with it, uh, it's just it's heartbreaking. Yep. Yeah, and it steals. I think it steals some of their sort of identity, pride, yep. and um, at times even you know seclude themselves. Yeah, we had um, we were doing our Parkinson study. Um, we started enrollment back in November of last year, and it was COVID. So we were shipping. We were doing um, telemedicine enrollment, mm -hmm. and you know calibrating mm -hmm. the patients, shipping the devices to their home, getting them started. Um, and it was a one month study. And so uh, this lovely woman had to return her device uh, right around New Year's. And she wrote us a letter and she said, this is a fir I, I get teared up. So it was the first time she was able to make Christmas cookies with her granddaughter and to underline passages in the Bible that she wanted, she wanted to, to you know, make note of. It's simple stuff like that. Yep, gets ya. awesome yeah. yeah well thanks for visiting us thank you for having me i yeah. i would be honored to stay and look at the surfers and the dolphins <laughs> i got champagne on ice <laughs> i'm in i'm in i appreciate it thank you for visiting thank you yeah good stuff yeah i'm joe mullings lsi conference be well <laughs>